Yes, it's a different backdrop, but that's because this is going to be a bit of a different conversation. Hello there, folks. Now this, <laughs> it's funny. I very much debated whether this was a video that I was going to put here or over on the Vera Wild channel. I have uh, actually got plans to start getting new videos up there soon, so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. This would fit a little bit more into the wheelhouse over there in terms of the kinds of things I'm going to be discussing, but I'm still putting it here because I want to put this on the biggest platform I've got on YouTube. So here we go. I need to talk to you about what is currently going on with the website OnlyFans. What is OnlyFans? Well, OnlyFans is a site that allows creators to offer up their product uh, with a paywall ahead of it. So you pay whatever their monthly rate is and get access to whatever it is they're offering. Sometimes it may be photography, it may be video content, it may be written works, it could be pieces of art, it could be really anything. However, what OnlyFans has become primarily known for at this point is sex workers. Now, I should probably do some clarifications on that term because there's an awful lot of people out there who hear the term sex worker and immediately think prostitute. Now, while prostitution is a type of sex work, it is far from the only one. And that term expands to many, many industries, legitimate industries. Not that I want to illegitimize prostitution. I will circle back onto that issue in a little bit. There's going to be a lot going on in this video. Heads up. But sex work can and does include the creation of pornography, whether it be for a pornography studio or as an independent creator. It applies to anyone who works in a strip club. It applies to anyone who releases sexually based content. So it can be said to apply to people who write erotica, draw erotic art. I'm a sex worker of a kind. I'm a burlesque performer, which isn't something I, I hide. I've talked about it before. And while I'll be very quick to defend the artistry of burlesque and go into the nuances and what distinguishes it from a stripper, that's not out of any sense of superiority because I've seen some amazing strippers who do stuff I would kill myself if I tried to do. But it is a different kind of art with a different platform and often aimed at a different audience. But ultimately, at the end of the day, when I perform burlesque, I get on a stage, take off most of my clothes, and get paid for that. That is sex work. Now, that's not to make it seem like I'm only talking about this because I have a personal stake in sex work. Sex work and sex workers is severely stigmatized in our society, which is part of what's going on. But we're going to be getting into this as the whole thing goes on. So circling back to OnlyFans, now that we have an understanding of what sex work is. OnlyFans, as I said, has become kind of a central hub for sex workers of varying types. It may be people who are using it to promote in-person services, which is not necessarily prostitution, mind you, because domination or legal dungeons are a thing in this society. You can engage in those kinds of things where sexual penetration is not actually part of the scene being played out. But in any case, there's lots of things Lots of different, wide variety of creators, some of which don't even appear naked, but they still make content that is appealing to people's kinks and fetishes, because not all of those require nudity. So it's a wide spectrum of people. And as I said, this is what OnlyFans has become known for. It's actually very sincerely what the business has been built on. It's not the only thing that is on the site, and it may or may not have been the initial intent of the site to focus on that, but now, at time of recording, I believe the official announcement came a day ago, they, come October 1st, are going to start purging sexually explicit content off the site, which has a lot of people angry, I think rightfully so, and an awful lot of people confused, because given what the business is, it seems like a very bad miscalculation. Because it basically amounts to, we have built up our business on the back of sex workers, and now we're going to 
purge them from the system. So we don't have a really detailed definition from OnlyFans, at least at time of recording, as to what they mean by sexually explicit content. They have said that they will still allow nudity, but that's where things get very iffy. Where is the line between nudity and sexually explicit? There are some things that seem, okay, that's a given. Showing penetration of a bodily orifice with a sexual object or body part, most would clarify or classify that as sexually explicit. But what if it's nudity where that's not happening, but just the angles, the pose, is very sexualized? Hey there, folks. It's Vera from the future, or more accurately, from the editing process. So I'm going to be jumping in at a couple of points here to note some things that have changed or more information that's come out since I shot this, or to add in a few details that I should have put in in the first place. The first one is that since I shot this, OnlyFans has put out some detailed information about what they intend to no longer allow on their site, or at least what they claim is detailed information. It's actually not nearly as helpful as you would think, though it's more information than we have before. I'm not going to go through every point at this, but there's two things I want to highlight. The first is that it is going to condemn both actual and simulations of the behavior they no longer want on the site. So having an argument of, look, I didn't actually do that, I just implied it, or I set up a scene that made it clear that that was going on, but nothing is actually shown, will not work as an argument in favor of keeping material on the site. They will remove it simply for the implication or the simulation of these things. The other thing that I want to highlight is the term extreme or offensive, which they use in regards to displays of, well, the genital area in general. The problem with those is those are nonspecific, malleable terms. Anything could be deemed extreme or offensive. Those are subjective. So while they have, quote-unquote, defined what is not allowed, that definition in and of itself can easily be moved in terms of what is considered either extreme or offensive. So, again, we have more detail, but it's uh, not nearly as helpful as OnlyFans is trying to paint it. Now... From a cold logic perspective, as I mentioned, this would seem like suicide. They're going to lose not only a massive number of their biggest money-making creators on the platform, but a whole bunch of other people are going to leave in solidarity, even if they aren't the top creators, and they are going to take their fan bases with them. One of the things about OnlyFans is, unlike, say, YouTube or TikTok, it's not designed around an algorithm to present you with creators that they think you'll like. There is that aspect as part of the site, but it's not the major appeal of it. People who do well on the site pull in interest from other places, be it Twitter, TikTok, although that, hmm, that one's dodgy. Again, something I will come back to in a little bit. And things of that nature, or they've had work up on other sites and they then direct people to their OnlyFans. It's a bit, honestly, like how Patreon is not designed for people to just browse and find people to support. So it's not something that you can easily build as its own platform, but you can direct people who have found your work or at least enough of a sampling of your work that they want more to it. That's the case of Patreon. It's kind of in the case with OnlyFans. So removing their most productive and their biggest money-making creators or discouraging them off the platform, and even ones who aren't violating the new guidelines are probably going to try and find somewhere else to go because they're going to worry that they are going to step on the wrong toe and have their account nuked, then this is just going to kill a whole bunch of the appeal of the thing. Now, here's one of the things about this. Anyone who's been paying attention knew this was coming. We've known for months that this was coming. There were various signals, indicators, that made it very clear that this was coming down the pipeline. There were some people who did honestly think that it wouldn't happen because, look, OnlyFans, that's where they make all their money. Why would they do that? Well, part of the reason, and there are others, but part of the reason is that OnlyFans wishes to pull in more investors. Investors tend to be scared off by adult content. So OnlyFans is kind of in a bit of an awkward position where they have built themselves up to, into a company pulling in over a billion dollars in revenue a year, and that makes them appealing to investors. But those investors are scared off by the sexually based content, 
but removing that content would remove a bunch of the value of the business. So when people say this doesn't make a lot of sense, no, you're kind of right. It doesn't. The thing to realize is this isn't really about OnlyFans. This is about the credit card companies and the pressure being put on them by puritanical, religious-based, conservative groups. Now, I want to be really careful here because I don't want people to think that I believe or that I'm saying that anyone who is a conservative or anyone who is religious or anyone who believes in a certain amount of living a puritanical life to be a better thing, I don't believe that all of those people are necessarily anti-sex work or anti-sex. Some of them, and I've known some, are simply in a matter of that is something I do not wish to engage in at all. But they're content to leave it at that. But ultimately, the groups behind what's go going on, and there is one in particular which we'll get to, they are puritanical, highly conservative, and religious in their focus. And their goals are to clamp down on every form of sex work as much as possible, and even the vaguest hint of it. And many, many companies, especially tech and web-based companies, are scared. Because if you think there isn't a connection, and there aren't dots to be connected between Craigslist purging its adult listings, Tumblr removing adult material, Patreon booting a whole ton of adult contributors and sex workers who then went to OnlyFans and now OnlyFans purging it. These are not isolated. These are not unrelated. This is all connected. This is all by design. And if you want to get a sense of how bad it is and how scared many of these apps are, at the time of recording, about two hours ago, actually, at the time I'm recording this, my TikTok account, which had over 100,000 followers, got completely nuked. Thanos, gone, because I put up a video making a joke that at this point there was no way I would start an OnlyFans account. The point of the video was, because of the current thing going on, what we're talking about right here, I'm definitely not going to start an OnlyFans account, simply because of the mention of that, of that kind of work. The bots caught it and nuked my account. No warning, it was just gone. Now I am appealing this, I'm in the process, and now I know not to even joke about this, which is its own form of bullshit. So, quick update on the TikTok. My uh, account is still gone. I appealed the decision to have it removed, and that appeal was denied. I will grant that the response that I got looked very computer generated. It did not look like a human being ever actually took a look at any of this. The response does not specifically lay out what it was that was the problem, and the whole thing just reads as a form letter. Unfortunately, I am not aware of any way to get hold of a live person, nor does there appear to be another way to appeal a second time or take it to a higher level. If someone is aware of such things, I would love to hear about them, but... Um, I have gone ahead and started a new TikTok account, which I'm doing things on very slowly because for some strange reason, I've lost my motivation for the platform. Don't know how that happened. But that's the degree of it. Someone who has in good standing 100,000 followers gone in an instant because of a reference to a site best known for housing sex workers and my whole account's gone. That is how scared these tech companies currently are. Now let's talk about why. And let's talk about some of those groups that I alluded to. Or really, I'm gonna focus on one. Because there are others, but there's one major one driving almost everything right now. And that is an organization called Exodus Cry. Exodus Cry is a group of very well-organized and very aggressive people. And do you remember last year when Pornhub purged basically all of its amateur creators? That was Exodus Cry. In the wake of some content being found on Pornhub that should not have been there, which, to be clear, is a problem. Exodus Cry jumped on this 
and created hashtag trafficking hub. And they used the claim that Pornhub was facilitating sex trafficking, which is the common argument from these groups. We'll get to that in a little bit too. They used that claim to put pressure on MasterCard and Visa to no longer honor their transactions. And they put out a petition that got millions of signatures. And the result of that was Visa and MasterCard cut off Pornhub. Pornhub got rid of everyone other than their verified creators, i.e. the people who were willing to provide enough personal information that Pornhub could track them down and or give their information to law enforcement if they ever put anything up that was illegal or showed illegal activity, and purged everybody else from the system. Hey, it's me again. It's worth noting that despite this move, MasterCard and Visa have yet to restore purchasing power to Pornhub. And the site has actually been forced to do all of its transactions through either direct bank transfer or cryptocurrency. And that's how they're currently operating. Pornhub was and is still the biggest name in the sex industry, especially when it comes to anything related to tech and online content. And they couldn't fight it. They lost. OnlyFans doesn't have a chance. So while from the outside looking in, it could just seem like OnlyFans has forgotten how it got where it is and is ditching the people that made it what it currently is and made it anything of value, they're actually kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because that exact same pressure is now being applied to them. And while Visa and MasterCard have not cut them off, they are deathly afraid of that because they've had pressure from banking organizations like Visa, like MasterCard saying, we really don't want you to have this kind of stuff. Hey folks, it's me for one last addendum. MasterCard has replied to the statements by OnlyFans that say they are getting pressure to buy companies like MasterCard and Visa. MasterCard has claimed that they have not put any direct pressure onto OnlyFans. And while I don't think that's necessarily untrue, it is misleading. Just because you're not directly told to doesn't mean that that implication is not clearly there. MasterCard, through its behavior towards sites like Pornhub and how just the general winds of finance is going, didn't have to exert direct pressure onto OnlyFans for that pressure to exist in the atmosphere right now. So while I believe it is possible that MasterCard is being truthful when they say they didn't ask for this, I do think it's very disingenuous for them to imply that they have absolutely no part in it because their current policies are absolutely driving these decisions. Now, let me be clear. The source of this is Exodus Cry and organizations like it. Because MasterCard and Visa and OnlyFans and Pornhub and Patreon, Craigslist, Tumblr, every single organization that is involved in this otherwise, these are all capitalist organizations. They will do what is best for their bottom line. And if it was just a matter of we're getting a cut of the money, then none of this would be in danger. Because there's money to be made. But the problem is, is that Exodus Cry has enough people genuinely believing in their mission statement and enough people who they have tricked into supporting them. And yes, I will say tricked because I guarantee you the majority of people who signed that initial petition against Pornhub did not read the organization's full mission statement. Or if they did, they didn't understand it. And I'm not trying to call anyone an idiot, but... This is not dissimilar to an organization like Autism Speaks, where the face of it appears to be something helpful, but you dig into what it actually is and you realize, oh crap. And when they have looked into them, numerous large names have disassociated themselves from them after initially considering in some way partnering with them. This includes Melissa McCarthy, HBO, and the International Slavery Museum, who once they realize what these people are actually about and the fact that their founder, Benjamin Nolet condemns gay marriage and has compared abortion to the Holocaust, they moved away very quickly. But most people don't know that. So let's talk about Exodus Cry's actual mission statement. And I'm going to read this to you directly from their site. I will then go into analysis of it, but let's start with their actual words. We fight sex trafficking and all forms of commercial sexual exploitation. Trafficking is one component of a much larger system of violence, exploitation, and gender inequality known as the commercial sex industry. Our strategies are designed to assist, empower, and help bring freedom to those who have been victimized while also fighting to uproot the larger system of injustice and exploitation it made possible. Now, if you don't think about those words, 
that can sound okay, but there should be a red flag in that very first sentence, and then an even bigger one in the second. The first sentence, we fight sex trafficking and all forms of commercial sexual exploitation. That linking of the idea that all forms of commercial sexual exploitation, which to them is any form of pornography or adult entertainment, that is synonymous with sex trafficking, or at least they cannot be separated as far as this organization and many other organizations like them are concerned. As far as they are concerned, if it is the sex industry, it involves and supports and benefits from sex trafficking. Whether or not they truly believe that, some members do, I'm sure. I think some of them know better, as is kind of evidenced by that second sentence. Trafficking is one component of a much larger system of violence, exploitation, and gender inequality known as the commercial sex industry. So they lead with saying that we fight sex trafficking, but then say, oh, but this is just a small part of this much bigger problem. Their second sentence makes it clear their point is not to end sex trafficking, but their point is to go after sex trafficking as a way to dismantle all adult entertainment and everything they consider to be sexually exploitative, and a bit like with OnlyFans itself, as we said earlier, how one chooses to define that term matters a lot. The specifics matter, and, I, and they paint it with the broadest possible brush. If it is in any way sexualized and then sold for money, whether it be by an industry, by an individual, they will label it exploitative so that they can condemn it with everything else. And let me be clear on a couple of things here. There is exploitation within the sex work industry. There have been and continue to be issues of sex trafficking within the sex work industry. However, shutting down sex workers does not help people who have been trafficked. I'm going to say that again. Going after sex workers is going after sex workers. It's not helping people who have been trafficked. Because here's something to keep in mind. Sex trafficking is a crime. If you catch someone who is trafficking another human being for the purposes of sex, regardless of whether they ever get involved in the adult industry in any way, sex, shape, or form, that is already a crime. Especially if they're a minor. Criminalizing the work that many adults engage in legally, or at the very least demonetizing it and forcing that and forcing it underground. This is part of the thing. Forcing it underground, first of all, doesn't make anything go away. The people who are actually in charge of investigating, like at a federal level, said flat out, if you remove sites like this, it is going to make it harder for us to do our job. Because people on these sites who engage in legitimate sex work don't want trafficking either. And they are actually a major resource in reporting trafficking when it happens. But if you remove their ability to communicate with each other or get their clients, all you're doing is driving the trafficking further underground and making it harder to track down and actually stop. And let's be clear about a few other things. Prostitution specifically, and also the pornographic industry, both have very long, very horrifying histories of sexual exploitation and violence. But there are two things that I want you to realize, one about each of these. Starting with prostitution, the main reason prostitutes are victimized to the degree that they are is not inherent with the work they do. It is inherent in the fact that they cannot go to the police when they are abused, nor can they go to the police if they see abuse in their industry because what they do is illegal. Nearly everything that is dangerous about prostitution stems from the very fact of its illegality, which is why people who support sex workers' rights, or just women's rights, because that is the majority of sex workers, and this is a way to clamp down on the very idea that women have sexuality, because if you were trying to tell me they shouldn't be selling their bodies, how is that any different from wrestlers, from a bodybuilder, from a male lumberjack using his physique to do big, hard work with his muscles. He is using his body. He is selling his body to someone who will put his body to use. Women have just as much right to do that as anyone else, or at least they should. And the fact that they don't 
is what makes this work dangerous. And it's actually incredibly important to point out that online resources that either do or used to facilitate sex workers, even prostitutes, in finding their clients made their work safer. They empowered the sex workers to better be able to vet their clients before they even found them, to not require pimps, which was a huge part of, another huge part of why that work was so dangerous. And again, stemming from the fact that it's illegal, they needed someone to watch out for them back in the days when prostitution was primarily done on street corners. That was all made safer by moving it online. So then attacking it online is what makes it dangerous again. And then in terms of pornography, Yes, the porn industry has been horrifically exploitative over the years, but you know what has done a lot to cut back on that? Giving sex workers the power to work independently. And that is exactly what sites like OnlyFans were doing. It was empowering them to not have to go to an exploitative casting director porn studio in order to get work. They could create their own work, find their own niche, build an audience that they were comfortable with around work they were comfortable doing. And that is now being taken away from them. To review, OnlyFans will be removing quote-unquote sexually explicit content from its site because of pressure put onto it by banking and credit card companies who are responding to pressure from organizations like Exodus Cry, who use terms like sex trafficking, which everyone, even people involved in the sex industry, all agree is a bad thing, but they use that as a front to garner support and go after every form of adult entertainment and to go after everyone who makes money that way because they are puritanical and they will not allow for the belief that a person, especially a woman of any kind, is empowered to use and sell her body and her talents as she sees fit in a way between two consenting adults that does not affect anyone else. And they use that trafficking as a way to garner far more support than would ever be the case if people actually knew what they were about. So, what do we do? And I don't have a firm answer on that. Because the first issue is the fact that the largest online entity already folded. That was Pornhub. And now it's OnlyFans. And Exodus Cry and other organizations like it are just going to keep working down the line. Wherever sex workers migrate to next, they will target that next in the same way. So if you think, well, people can just move their work to Just for Friends, to many vids, to Clips for Sale, and these other smaller sites that have been around for a while but are not nearly as ubiquitous, these people will target that as well. They want it all gone and far far too much ground has been capitulated. And look, you do not have to personally engage with or even necessarily approve of sex work in order to be an ally because this is harming vulnerable people. One of the recent headlines in the last few months was about a nurse who made far more money on OnlyFans than she ever did from her job. This work while not always being the case, but it is possible, and sometimes it does, empower people who are not getting their due, who are not granted the opportunities, or who are squashed under the capitalist system to make that system work for them, to offer a service that people are willing to pay for. But because this primarily benefits women, and queer people, because there's an awful lot of them on OnlyFans, and it has anything to do with sex, organizations like Exodus Cry want it crushed, and they are succeeding. The only thing that I know to do right now is to educate. And that is ultimately the purpose of this video. I am trying to educate you, and you can look up everything I've talked about here. I'll put some uh, references in some cases to this as best as I can so I can show you my homework on this. But if you look into it, truly look into it, you will see that these organizations don't actually 
care just about trafficking. They're using trafficking as a way to shut down entire legitimate industries and even things like prostitution, which I would argue should not even be illegal in the first place. This is hurtful and harmful to people who have done nothing wrong because these are activities engaged in by consenting adults. And anytime any activity is engaged in by someone who did not consent and or isn't an adult, that, guess what? That is already a crime under every laws that we've got on the books. So that can be prosecuted and targeted without taking down everything. Unless taking down everything is what you actually want. So that's why this video is here. On the largest channel I have on this platform, because people need to know. They need to know what these organizations are actually doing. They need to know before they sign petitions, before they donate money. They need to know, and then they can let other people know. Spreading the education and spreading the truth of what is going on and why, right now is the best and possibly only tool we've got. Because like so many far-right organizations, they don't have the raw numbers that they make it look like. They garner signatures on petitions from people who don't understand the full extent of that business, and they make the most noise possible. They inflate their numbers in order to outsize their influence. But if we can start by knowing and being able to recognize and explain to other people why that is all wrong. That's step one. Then step two is organizing in the other direction and helping people, helping sex workers who have every right to do what they do and for businesses to be able to support them as a sustainable business model without being forced by credit card companies who are being pressured to just drop all of it. None of this was organic. None of this is a truly moral choice on any of the businesses involved. They are having their hands forced by organizations that are harmful and untruthful. I'm going to put links below to some organizations that support sex workers. And I hope you will check those out if you want to directly support what I do. I do not have an OnlyFans. But I do have a Patreon, and that is my living. That is how I am supported. And there are probably people out there simply by the fact that I am visibly queer would love to be able to pressure them to no longer host my content. This is a matter of dominoes. You start by talking sex trafficking. You use it to take down sex work. You start by opening up conversations about kids who are confused and aren't really trans or trans athletes in high schools, and you use it as a way to clamp down on all trans people. And you use the clamp down on trans people as a way to springboard into clamping down on all queer people. These are not single items. This is a list of things that they are trying to stop. Whatever your thoughts are, even if you disagree with me, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. Simply do so politely. And please remember, that you are beautiful, you are valid, you are loved. You are the council, and I am running these meetings to the best of my ability and for the best ends that I can manage. And until next time, this council is adjourned.